It's your weekly blitz with Chris, keeping you in the game. Good morning, everyone. Coach Chris Cotton here from AutoFix Auto Shop Coaching, where I work hard to support your auto repair shop success. As you get into today's episode, you may know someone in your network who can benefit from today's topic. So please take time to share personally or through your social network. If you have an idea for a show topic or just want to talk, feel free to get with me, Chris at AutofixSOS.com. Let's get started with episode 89, Leadership Gold, Keep Learning to Keep Leading. As we continue to develop our teams and everything else, it's super important that you invest in yourself. And so that's why I love this chapter and I love where this is going. And I want to make sure that everybody understands it's okay to continue to grow. People don't grow automatically. To grow, you have to be intentional. So in that vein, how will you grow? As you seek to learn and grow as a leader, obviously I wanna help you how to approach the process. Number one, you have to invest in yourself first. Most leaders want to grow their business or organization. What is the one thing more than any other that will determine the growth of that organization? The actual growth of the people in the organization. And then what in turn determines the people's growth? the growth of the leader. As long as people are following you, they'll be able to go only as far as you go. If you're not growing, they won't be growing. Either that or they'll leave and go somewhere else where they can grow. Happens a ton in businesses nowadays. People don't know their future, the path of their future. There's no growth, they don't see it, so they're out. In the beginning, investing in yourself may may look selfish to some of the people around you, People are going to criticize you for it. But if they do, they don't really understand how growth works, right? When airline flight attendants, and you guys have heard heard me say this probably a hundred times in other podcasts and everything. When flight attendants explain the emergency procedures, they tell passengers to put their own oxygen mask on first before they put the mask on the children. Is that instruction selfish? Well, of course it's not. The children's safety and well-being is dependent upon the parent being able to help them. And so as a leader, as a parent, you're responsible for your people. They are depending on you. If you're in no shape to lead well, where does that leave them? If you look around, you can see a pattern at work in every area of life. Employees get better after their supervisor does. Kids get better after their parents do. Students get better after their teachers do. Customers get better after the salespeople do. And likewise, followers get better after their leaders do. It's a universal principle. Harry Truman once said, you cannot lead others until you first lead yourself. In saying that, you know, it's it's only possible if you invest in yourself first. Number two, be a continual learner. When a leader reaches a desired position or level of training, there's a temptation to slack off, and that's a dangerous place to be. Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life, says, the moment you stop learning is the moment you stop leading. If you want to lead, you have to learn. If you want to continue to lead, you must continue to learn. This will guarantee that you will be hungry for ever greater accomplishments and will help you to maintain credibility with your followers. I tell a story about my dad a lot. And for whatever reason, he worked, he did mechanical work, repair work with my brother. And it's crazy. The two of them together, you could just throw parts from eight different things in the middle of the floor and they could build three other things that weren't the original eight out of that. It's just amazing. It amazes me how mechanically inclined they are. I'm not that way. But when I was a kid, my dad would do carpentry skills and woodworking with me and mechanical skills and things like that with my brother. It's kind of ironic that both of us are in the in the repair industry, but Kind of the stopping point for me was one day my dad, I think he was wiring up some lights on a trailer, some brake lights on a trailer. And of course me, I'm, I brought the beer, I got the bologna sandwich, I'm holding the flashlight and I was trying to get my dad to explain to me what he was doing Um, because I didn't understand. He's got all these wires, he's got this thing, he's, you know, I have no clue what he was doing. And so I asked him, I go, I go, dad, what are you doing? Can you please explain it to me? And my dad kind of just stopped and he looked at me and he goes, well, son, he goes, I can't explain to you what I'm doing. Cause if I tell you everything I know, plus everything, you know, then you'll be smarter than me. And right then and there was like, okay, I'm done. Like I, like I'm the type of person you have to tell me what's going on or else I lose interest. I'm, I'm not a fisherman. I have to be catching or else I'm out. And so I say that story to say this. What if my dad 
would have taken this to heart and been like, okay, I'm going to start teaching you everything I know, but now I find it my responsibility to stay out ahead of you. So I have to learn more so that I can teach you and we can both grow together. Maybe not that extreme an example, but that's how it resonates with me. Successful people don't see learning or achievement as a fixed destination to head for and having arrived to settle into, completed and finished. Not once have I heard someone who is a continual learner talk about looking forward to coming to the end of life's challenges. They continue to exhibit an excitement, a curiosity, or a sense of wonder. One of their most engaging characteristics is their infectious desire to keep moving into the future, generating new challenges, and living with a sense that there's more to learn and accomplish. Those people understand that you can't conquer the world by staying in a safe harbor. What kind of attitude do you have when it comes to learning? When we observe people, they typically fall into one of three categories. The challenge zone, I attempt to do what I haven't done before. The comfort zone, I do what I already know I can do. Or the coasting zone, I don't even do what I've done before. Everybody starts out in the challenge zone. As small babies, we have to learn to eat, talk, walk. Then we go to school and keep learning, but there comes a time in every person's life when they no longer have to keep trying new things. This is a pivotal time. Um, For some people, it occurs pretty early in life. For others, it comes after they achieve some degree of success. That's when they decide which zone they'll live in. Do they live in the challenge zone where they will continue to try new things and explore and sometimes fail? The comfort zone where they no longer take risks or the coasting zone where they don't even try anymore. Ooh, shop owners, I'm calling you out. Like, like I have a lot of shop owners sometimes that get into this coasting zone and they, everything's good. Everybody's fat and happy. And the pain of making a change to advance the business is just too much effort. So you just find yourself coasting. I feel like it's a sad day when a person chooses to leave the challenge zone and stop growing. The minister who spoke at Abraham Lincoln's funeral said, sad is the day for any man when he becomes absolutely satisfied with the life he's living, the thoughts that he is thinking, and the deeds that he's doing, when there ceases to be forever beating at the doors of his soul a desire to do something larger, which he seeks and knows he was meant and intended to do. AutoLeap is a cloud-based, all-in-one auto repair software that helps to keep complete track of your business, from scheduling appointments to managing technicians to generating invoices. Supercharge your growth with AutoLeap. Customers that fully adopt AutoLeap see the following benefits in their first year. 30% revenue growth, with top customers seeing over 100% growth, 75% decrease in no-shows, allowing you to service more customers, three times increase in positive Google reviews, leading to stronger online presence, 50% time saved on administrative tasks, driving increase in operational efficiency. Do it all with AutoLeap. Key features and functions include estimates, invoices, scheduling, Google reviews, inspections, communication, QuickBooks, reporting. Get in touch with AutoLeap to see how you can transform your auto repair shop. For a limited time, if you schedule a demo, sign up with AutoLeap and they will waive the $250 implementation fee. You know, there's no substitute for continual learning. I think you need to read daily to grow your personal life. I think you need to listen daily to broaden your perspectives. I think that daily you need to apply all uh, you need to apply all the things you learn, and then you need to be able to file all that away so that you can preserve what you learn and pull it out later. I'm a big fan of the German philosopher Goethe, who said, "Never let a day pass without looking at some perfect work of art." hearing some great piece of music, and reading, in part, some great book. Number three, create a growth environment for the people you lead. Most work environments are not conducive to growth. Again, this is why people leave our industry and they're off to somewhere else, because we do a terrible job of being in the growth business. Part of that growth environment is is the average person is going to try to pull down anyone around him who is working to rise above average. It's just typical. Like that's why all your social media, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. People are like, Oh no, don't do that. The road to success is uphill all the way. And most people are not willing to pay that price. Many people would rather deal with old problems than find new solutions to be a lifelong learner. You have to get out of a stagnant environment and distance yourself from people who have no desire to grow. You have to seek out places where growth is valued and people are growing and It'll help you change and grow, especially in the beginning of your journey. If you're investing in yourself and have adopted the attitude of a continual learner, you may think you've done all you need to do in the area of personal growth. But as a leader, you have one more responsibility. You need to create a positive growth environment for the people you lead. 
If you don't, the peoples in your organizations who want to grow will find it difficult to do so, and they'll eventually seek out other opportunities. You guys see a trend here? Like, that's not the first time I've mentioned that in this chapter. It's like the fourth or the fifth time. So what does a growth environment look like? There's 10 characteristics of a place where these following things occur, these 10. Others are ahead of you. You are continually challenged. Your focus is forward. The atmosphere is affirming. You are often out of your comfort zone. You wake up excited. Failure is not your enemy. Others are growing. People desire change. And growth is modeled and expected. If you can create a growth environment, not only will the people in your organization grow and improve, but people with great potential will knock down your doors to become part of your team. It will transform your organization. This is why we say great shops aren't lacking for great technicians and service advisors and leaders because people want to come be a part of what you have. You know, there's the scuttlebutt around town is like, man, so-and-so has a great shop. And then other people hear that and they're like, oh, I want to work at their great shop. In the end, it's the people difference, right? Walt Disney said, I am a part of all that I've met, which I think is amazing. It means to me that every time you meet somebody, every time you talk to somebody, you take a little piece of that person with you. And whether you're trying to cross over into the ranks of continual learners or you're trying to build an organization that possesses a growth environment, the secret to the success can be found in the people who surround you with and the people you surround yourself with. People's attitudes and actions rub off on one another. That's why I am a big believer in everybody's replaceable in your business. There's not one person that will make or break your business. If there is, then we've got to get out of that mindset and we've got to teach and create other people in your organization. That way you don't have to rely on one person. It's shop owners consistently and constantly. Well, I can't because this person's going to do this. I can't do that because of this. There's always somebody better out there. You do not have today the best person that there ever was in that position. You just don't. Being around people who are better than we are has a tendency to make us stretch and improve ourselves. It's not comfortable, right? But it is always profitable. It's said that whenever the great poet Emerson saw the the essayist Thoreau, they would ask each other, what has become clearer to you since last we met? And that's because each of them wanted to know what the other was learning. Great people desire to bring out the greatness in others. Small people will try to put the same limits on you that they have put on themselves. Small people. It's amazing. Okay. And so here are your application exercises for this chapter. Do you have destination disease? If you think you've arrived... By achieving a certain position, acquiring a particular degree or credential, or earning a certain level of income, then you're in danger of finding yourself in either the comfort or coasting zone. What are you doing to guard against that? Make sure that your long-term personal goals are growth-oriented instead of destination-oriented. Number two, what's your plan? Working hard and putting in long hours does not ensure growth. Neither does promotion. What will you do this week, this month, and this year to actively grow? I would recommend that you read a minimum of one growth-oriented book a month and listen to a minimum of one growth-oriented book on audio per month. In addition, schedule yourself for an annual conference or growth-oriented retreat. Are you creating a growth environment? If you possess any kind of leadership position, you're responsible for creating a growth environment for the people who work for you. Use the guidelines from the chapter to start creating one. Remember, a growth environment is one in which... Others are ahead of them. This means you're growing. They are continually challenged. The focus is forward on the future, not past mistakes. The atmosphere is affirming. They are often out of their comfort zone, but not their strength zone. They wake up excited. They're excited about coming to work. Failure is not their enemy. They're allowed to take risks. Others are growing. You must place a high value on growth for everyone. People desire change, and growth is modeled and expected by you and others. The mentoring moment. Take your investment to the next level by helping the people you're mentoring to create a personal growth plan tailored specifically for them. Help them select the books and lessons they will use in the coming year. Send them to the conference that you believe will help them the most and give them a personal retreat day to reflect on what they've learned and how they want to keep growing. Again, it's about how you foster leadership and training for yourself and leadership and training and growth for your team. This has been Coach Chris Cotton from Autofix Auto Shop Coaching, reminding you that it never always gets worse, but sometimes it has to get worse to get better. Please feel free to reach out to me, Chris, at autofixsos.com or give me a call at 940-400-1008. Time to rise and grind, everyone. 
You've been listening to the Weekly Blitz with Coach Chris Cotton on the AftermarketRadioNetwork.com. Follow Chris on your favorite podcast listening app. Let him know what you'd like him to cover. His email is in the show notes. Chris is all for advancing the aftermarket. <laughs>